Hi, this is Drew Klausner from Pixel Pixel. The next lesson is going to be about the, using the clone tool for your photo restorations. In the previous lesson, we used the spot healing brush to uh, remove some of the dust from the image. And there were a couple of areas that that di tool didn't work very well. And now I'm going to show you a, a very powerful tool that will do something different than the spot healing brush and in some cases it's the only tool that you can use. So let's get started. The clone tool can be found here on the toolbar and it's sometimes called the stamp tool, clone stamp tool, and that's the one that we're going to be using. Now you need to adjust your brush size and this is very important with, with the clone tool um, to find the, the good, a good brush size. And a good brush size is one that will cover the area that you want, not be too large and not be too small. And only through using this tool will you get the hang of this. I'm going to start here with uh, size 13. Now, there are different ways that you can use the clone tool, and I'm going to be using it in the normal mode right here. Opacity, I'm going to set this to 100. And this is the only uh, setting that I usually change besides the, the brush size. I don't change the flow. And it's good to have this on aligned. And now I'm going to show you how to use this. When you press the Option key on your keyboard, you'll see that the, the tool changes to like a target, a round circle target. And what we're doing here is we're picking an area that we want to click on. And now when I clone, you can see it shows me the little X. And that's where I'm pulling from and moving over to. I'm going to change this to 50. And you can see what I'm doing here. I'm pulling from here to here, and likewise as well there. Now, I often have to change where I'm cloning from depending on what I'm trying to erase. For instance, if I wanted to erase this little dot here, this little white speck, if I pulled from up here down to here, you can see it's pulling a tone that's too dark. So I wouldn't want to do that. What I want to do is pull from an area that's similar in tone. Now one of the other aspects of the clone tool that you have to be careful about is that you don't use it and show a repeating pattern. And what I'm going to show you here is there was an area, there was this spec last time, whoa, This spec I want to show you how to get rid of. So I'm going to go back to using the clone tool and I'm going to, in this case, make my brush size smaller because it's too large. I'm pulling too big an area and that's going to be it. I'm going to pull from here and clone to there. Now that works very well for that little spot that was close to the edge of her face. And you can see this is great tool for getting into areas that would not be too easy to use the healing brush with. Now this tool is especially good with scratches. And I'm going to show you how to use it there on a scratch. You can see I always change where I'm pulling from. That's very important. And as you can see, this tool really does a nice job. 
Let me show you the scratch on her face. And notice where I'm pulling from. Because that's very important in trying to erase something. It really does a great job. And before you know it, you can't even tell where those scratches were. I'm going to show you compare now the image to what we had before. Now if you notice down here, this is something that I tried to accomplish with the healing brush, the spot healing brush, and it left sort of a dimple. So what I'm going to do is now use the clone tool to get rid of that. So the clone tool is very useful for getting out scratches and other kinds of uh, marks that you can't use the spot healing brush for. And it does require some practice, both in adjusting the size, knowing the right size, and figuring out where to pull from so that your image cleans up properly. That's it for this. Uh, thanks for watching.